Morning. Hello, high schoolers. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us in this high schoolers webinar series, Digital Leaders in Light. The topic for the session is Generation Z and public speaking, the skills you need. Before we start, let us pray first. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your providence for gathering us together right now uh, to attend our webinar series, Lord Jesus, uh, bless this session, bless each one of us, uh, guide us together through this process, and let all glory be in your name. Amen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we have here as our speaker, Mr. Todd Bridges, who is a lecturer for our English for Business program. Uh, hello. Mr. Bridges. Mr. Bridges, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, here? Mr. Bridges. I can't hear Hello. you. Can you oh, hear me now? hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you thank you, me? sir, for preparing the session for us. Uh, okay, without further ado, let us give a round of applause for Mr. Bridges. Okay. All right, okay. All right. so uh, before I begin, a sound check. Everybody can hear me? I can hear you. Uh, it's okay. a bit far. It's a bit... Uh, it's quiet. Can you do something about the volume, sir? Um, what about now? Is it, is it any better? Yes. Yes, it's is better. Really better. Better, better. Okay. All right, great. All right, well, let's begin. Okay. All right. Okay, well... Uh, just a little introduction. First of all, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I know I can't hear from everyone. I know we have a lot of people that are listening, uh, but I just want to say good morning. I'm glad to be here with you. Uh, so just, uh, I, don't, I haven't met most of you, and so I want to introduce myself and let you know who's going to be speaking to you today. So my name is Todd Bridges, and I am a lecturer at the uh, University of Petra Christian, Petra Christian University. And so I've been there for just over four years. And I've, I've been living in Indonesia for around five years. And so uh, a little bit about me. If you can see, this is my family. I know it's probably not the clearest, but just doing the best we can here. I have five children. And this little baby here, we did not have to pay for a plane ticket because he, he was born here in Indonesia on uh, a place called Lombok Dua Dua, called Jalan Longtar. And so his name is Hosea, and I have a 16-year-old, Gabriella, in the red shirt, 14-year-old, Isabella, and then I have a... a Almost 12 year old Annabella, and then I have a nine year old boy, also Ori, and then my beautiful wife Jessica. This is us in Milan. Um, you, you see, I have been, uh, this was like one of my first classes ever at Petra, so I have been, I have been at Petra for four years, and I have thoroughly 
enjoyed my time there. I do uh, teach public speaking at Petra along with some other classes, and that's what we'll be talking about today. So uh, a little bit about me again. I do like sports, and I like, uh, I like teaching, and I like to play sports. And also, if you ask me, hey, what's your favorite Indonesian food? I, I'm probably going to say, it's hard for me to say, but nasi araban, and you know, also known as black soup. That's probably my favorite Indonesian food. All right, so that's just a little bit about me. That way you know who is speaking to you today. Uh, we're going to speak for around 30 or so minutes, and then we're going to have some time for a question and answer. All right, so... What I'm going to do is mostly talk about some tips of public speaking, and then maybe I'll, I'll mix in there a little bit about the English department and how it's more than just a language course, and we'll, I'll give some specific examples about that. All right, but before we begin, why public speaking? Like, uh, what's so important about it? Well, here we are, and I am presenting to you, and there's several of you guys watching. And so whether we're in a pandemic or you are in a business meeting with only 10 people, public speaking is key. It is how you get your ideas out um, virtually or person to person. And so it's very important. So today I just want to give you about six tips to public speaking, and it spells the word success, all right? Success. And so we'll start with the first one, simplicity. Simplicity, if you look at the slide here, you can see my slide is very just simple. And part of presenting is, is also pre uh, usually a presentation, whether you use PowerPoint or Keynote, but we have, uh, you know, lots of lots of different ways to present. But a lot of times, you're going to be using a presentation like this. Now, you can see how simple I made my first slide. Let's look at the next one. This is very common. You get words that are too small to read. You get random pictures that need explanation. I have just pictures of rocks and a random sign and random feet. And so it doesn't really give off a simple uh, presentation. And I'm defining simplicity. Um, I'm putting in synonyms. And many, many times in public speaking, the PowerPoints are too, there, there's too much writing. There's too many words. The words are too small to read and there's not enough time to read it all. And also you might see some pictures and you might think, what does that picture even mean? And so this is an example of what a simplicity of a, pop, of a presentation would not look like. And so let's go back. This is easy to read. You know exactly what the topic's gonna be. And this is, hey, what are all those pictures doing there? And oh, I can't read that. And, there's so much going on there. And so simplicity is our first letter for success in public speaking. Unexpectedness. Unexpectedness. Now, when you are engaging in people, uh, presenting to people, you really need to think about this word because this is what gets people's attention. Many times people can be uh, a presentation might be boring, but when you present something that's unexpected, a lot of times people will start to listen. And they might say, oh, okay, all right, so let's try it. Let's do it as an example, all right? Here's my example of unexpectedness. I'll read it together. Native English speaker versus a non-native English speaker. And then I ask the question, who is the best public speaker. Now you guys might expect me to say, well, of course the native English speaker is. Actually, I want to challenge your thoughts about public speaking and say, 
That is not necessarily true. And I don't just have one example, I have multiple examples to, to re-emphasize my point here. Just because you're a native speaker does not make you an automatic good public speaker. So let me give you an example. Before COVID-19, we used to have lots of interns come here. We would do these camps all throughout Indonesia. I've been to Bangka and, and um, you know, several islands in Indonesia. And we used to do these like summer fun camps for kids. And, and we would ask sometimes interns, or most of them were from America. Uh, we've had some from the UK, but a lot of times, uh, you know, we'll say, hey, do you want to share with people? And they'll say, oh, yeah, sure. And so we have seen multiple times native speakers, they start sharing and you realize, oh, they don't really, they don't have a lot of practice in public speaking. And always on these trips, we always get Indonesian students to join with us. They help with translation and, and they help with just, um, you know, development and, and things like that. And so you might think, well, yeah, of course the Indonesian speaker is better at presenting in Bahasa. But let me tell you, I have seen many Indonesian speakers who when they present in English, they do a better job than the native speaker. Okay, now you say, well, what is that? Let me tell you how. It's not about just vocabulary and accent. There is much more to public speaking than vocabulary and accent. And so some of my very own students who I have had in public speaking might come home uh, as an intern and they do an outstanding job. And mean, meanwhile, you have uh, some native speakers that are uh, what you would say a little rusty in public speaking because they've never practiced it. It's not something that just naturally comes. All right. Concreteness. Let's look at concreteness for a little bit. All right. I have a, another example for you. Everybody knows John F. Kennedy. If you don't, a little background on him was just he was a United States president. And he wanted to put a, a person on the moon, and he wanted to do it before 1970. And so, someone at a company called NASA, they wrote this for John F. Kennedy. And it says, let's read it together. It says, our mission is to become the international leader in the space industry through maximum team-centered innovation and strategically targeted aerospace initiatives. All right? If you are like me right now, you might think, what is that saying? And so that is exactly what, I, what I'm thinking. I understand the vocabulary. Yes, it's no problem. But it just doesn't, it's not concrete. It's not registering with our brains here. And so that is not what is famous. What is famous is this quote from John F. Kennedy. Let's read it again together. We will put a man on the moon and return him safely by the end of the decade. Now that is concrete. That is something that you can you can grab a hold of, you can, you can grab on it and understand it. Why? Because it is concrete. And this is his famous saying, not this quote written by a rocket scientist, literally. And so you gotta think about these things when you speak, what is concrete? Um, look at the next one, credibility. 
Okay, credibility. Now, many times I see presentations where the person will give their full resume, like this here. So this is, you know, my resume. Now, nobody can read this. Nobody has time to read it. It is too long. It, the words are too small. And you see this sometimes in presentations because they want to make themselves credible. But if you think about it, I've already given some credibility in my presentation already. Here now, I showed you a picture of my family. That establishes me as a family man. Man, 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 man you, can, you can trust. I showed you a picture of my favorite Indonesian food, nasi rawan. I know my accent's not very good. But like, what's he saying? Uh, I'm talking about black soup, all right? Uh, and so I showed you a picture of that. Now, what does that do? It shows you that I have experienced Indonesian culture. I have um, talked to you about being a lecturer for over four years at Petra University. And so I have established my credibility in a way that you didn't need to see my full resume, that no one has time or even the ability to read words in a presentation like this. It's just too small. And so credibility, that is one of the C's and success, all right? So um, it is important. Now, before we move on, say you were Michael Jordan, and probably most of you have heard of that name, but he's a famous, he was a famous basketball player. If he is asked to present something in basketball, he does not need to establish credibility. Many people say he's the best basketball player to ever play the game. But for me, most of you on the other line there, maybe either through YouTube or Zoom, you don't know me. So it was important that I do establish credibility. How can you be trustworthy to your audience in such a limited time? So again, before we move on, I showed you some pictures. I gave you a little background of my story. I showed you some of my favorite food and you got to know me a little bit. That is much more effective than a resume that no one can even read because of the font. All right, let's move on now to Emotions, we're already into emotions. Let me check the time here. All right, we're doing well, we're doing well. So emotions, all right, so um, emotions are important. So I found two pictures and you, uh, if you've seen the cartoon, it's pretty good. I think I fell asleep during some of it when I went with my children to the theater. But uh, before I fell asleep, I thought it was pretty good and you got this, angry bird and he gets mad a lot and so in a presentation a lot of times people are presenting something and they do have a lot of passion about the topic and passion is good but anger is is not and people are not looking to to um you know well, let me go back here People are not looking to listen to somebody that's so angry. All right, that's pretty self-explanatory. That makes sense for everybody. But what I really want to focus on is just this other person here who kind of looks a bit sad. Maybe he looks a little nervous. All right, so you say, how does this relate to public speaking? Let me tell you, many people, I'm going to tell you what an assumption is, and then I'm going to show you that it's not true. 
many people think that the extrovert is the better public speaker. Now, extrovert, if you don't know that word, it's just somebody very outgoing. They're, uh, they're not shy. You know, they're not malu. They are very outgoing. And the opposite of that is introvert. And many people think, oh, I don't want to take public speaking because I am an introvert and I don't like speaking in front of people. And it's not going to be fat, fat fair because my friend, oh, they're so funny and they're energetic. And whenever we're at the canteen, everybody's always listening to them. And so, yeah, of course, they're going to make a, a, a good grade, a good mark in the class. And I'm here to tell you, as someone who teaches public speaking, that is not necessarily true. I have seen both examples. I have seen people who are extroverted and they make, they make really good public speaking. But I have also seen, this is a true story, I have had a class last semester and it, it, it was a student and this person was incredibly shy, incredibly shy. But when she got up to present, she did an outstanding job because she knew that public speaking is not about personality only. So what happens, this picture doesn't only represent somebody who's introverted, it can represent somebody who's extroverted. Because the opposite of this, I have seen people who are funny, energetic, they're laughing all the time, they're, they can be loud, extrovert, and then they come up and they present and they do this. Good morning, class. I am going to, oh, wait, wait, my name, yes, my name is, um, I am going to speak. I'm going to speak with you about, and they are so nervous that they can hardly get their words out. And so public speaking is something that you practice. It's something that you, that you acquire and that you learn, something that takes practice. It would be no different than basketball. Yes, there may be some people that have natural ability, but they all, if you're going to be great, we talked about Michael Jordan already, if you're going to be great, you're going to have to put in the practice. So the opposite of this, somebody so nervous, is maybe somebody that's comfortable, somebody that uses their hands the way you see me using my hands, somebody that engages the crowd and wants to connect with the audience. And so all of that, you can do that by practice. You can do that in the mirror the night before. You can practice three or four times. And then when you get up in front of the audience, it's just like speaking in front of your mirror at home. And you've already done it three or four times. And so it's a practice deal. It is not automatic okay so the last part of our six six tips to public speaking and this ends our last letter which is success this um this is telling stories now you can see that this whole time i've been presenting i've been telling stories why why have i been telling stories because stories are what people remember. I'll give you an example. Maybe some of you go to church or, or it's something like where you're listening to a pastor. Now, say your pastor speaks for 30, 45 minutes. Kind of the way I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to speak for about 30 minutes and we're going to do questions and answers. 
How many can remember every single word of, of that passage? It's almost, it's impossible, right? You, you would need to record in and, and listen to it 10, 12 times. And that's impossible. But do you know what you can remember? You can remember the stories that the pastor told. And then you can relate that to the teaching from the pastor. And you can remember the, the lesson that the pastor was trying to express to you because they involved stories. So let me give you a story. Now, I've already talked to you about being introverted, extroverted. I'm actually kind of in the middle. My wife, who just walked down here, oh, yes, since you're here, can you give me a glass of water? That would be great. Um, my wife, I don't think she's going to come on camera right now because she's just uh, she's still in her pajamas. But um, I will, will ask her for a glass of water. Um, I told you this story, and to be honest with you, my wife is super extroverted. Super extroverted. And I'm a little more introverted than she is. But um, I have learned to practice my public speaking. Let me get this. A little bit of water. I have learned to practice my public speaking, but it's not, it has not always been like this. Let me give you a story. When I was your age, well, a lot of you um, probably got some 15, 16 year olds out there, but probably also got a lot of 18 year olds. And so when I was 18, I went to college, like, like a lot of people do. And in my first semester, I had to take a class called public speaking. Now, this also goes back, hey, you're a native English speaker, why do that? I think I've established the importance of public speaking and it does not just come naturally. So I'm 18 years old and I was giving a speech, and it was something about LASIK surgery, where you can improve your eyesight through surgery. And I remember being so nervous, uh, my throat being dry, and just uh, not doing a very good job. And I was 18 years, so I was 18 um, years old, and now I'm 38. I know a lot of you are thinking, 38? I thought you were 28. No, I, uh, I'm not. 38, just kidding. Uh, you saw I have a 16-year-old daughter. I got married when I was kind of young. And so I'm 38 now. So for 20 years, I have been practicing public speaking. And maybe, uh, you know, I'm probably not the most natural. I'm not the Michael Jordan of public speaking compared to basketball. But it's something that I have practice doing through repetition. And I've learned to just relax a little bit. Audience can relate to someone that's more relaxed than they can who is super nervous. I've learned to uh, be personal with the audience. Like just like then I uh, talked to you about my wife a little and even had a glass of water because my throat was dry. So I just learned some of these things that people can relate to. So if you, uh, if we just in review here, real quick, look at just the highlights. Simplicity, all right? Unexpectedness, concreteness, credibility, emotions, and stories. Now, those are just some of the tips that I teach in public speaking. And let me just, let me just go to this slide real quick. And because I told you I talked about the English department uh, for a second. This slide, I could, I think I have a laser pointer on here. See if I can find it. Yeah. Okay, I hope you can see that laser. I could replace this 
this word public speaking, I could replace that word with writing. And writing is another class that I teach at Petra University. Now, writing, I know when I even say that word, for some of you out there listening, that is the hardest part of English for you. You listen all the time to English, you probably watch a lot of YouTube, uh, maybe you speak, you, you know, get practice speaking, um, you read, you can read books a lot, but writing, you, you might think, oh, that's so hard. This is the same exact truth as public speaking. I have read many papers from native speakers. I used to teach in, a, in the US as well. And they, they did not know, uh, they had to practice that skill of writing. And so, yes? Oh, somebody speaking to me? Black senior, I only saw. What now? now I... Is that, yeah, is that uh, somebody saying something to me? Huh? Well, I think it's just some participant. Uh, I'm muted. Well, oh, it's okay. okay. Oh, just okay. Please continue. Okay. okay, yeah, and I'm, I'm almost done here with one or two more minutes. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about the English department for a second. And one of the one of the things I want to highlight is Petra, the English department at Petra Christian University is not an English course. It helps you become better communicators as businessmen and women or in creative English, where you we use English as our means of communication, but we are not just trying to improve as the English language or even only improve for like a TOEFL test. The idea is to be better communicators. And this I also see not just with public speaking, but as I was saying with writing. I, I have native speaker daughters, and you know, I have one that's 16, and she likes to write. Uh, you know, I know one that's 14, and I can take you to some of the papers that I grade in my writing five class, and they are excellent. And they are better than a lot of native speakers. Now, you say, how is that possible? Well, it's the same as public speaking. It's a practice, it's a skill that, that you would develop in the English department. You know, starting with writing one and going all the way to writing five. And so before you graduate, you know what it is to write academically. You know what it is to write in a scholarly fashion compared to some, you know, maybe native speakers out there, they only blog or they only text and then you say, I need you to write a formal paper to the dean or to the president. And they really have no idea how to even start. Dear Mr. President. And after that, they almost want to start texting because that's what they're familiar with. And so the, the English department does a lot more than uh, just help in English. It, it teaches you how to be better communicators you know, speaking and writing and even critical analysis and reading and things like that. And so I just want to um, kind of mention that before I go. And I hope you have enjoyed this time. I hope you have learned the six tips of public speaking. Again, if you want to remember easily in its success, it spells success. And so thank you for your time. And I've been told that there's going to be questions and answers now, and then I've also been told that the first three uh, will have a goodie package mailed to them from the English department, so we can uh, we can go ahead and begin those questions. If anybody has any, please please go ahead and ask. Yes. Ah. Uh, well. Mr. Bridges, uh, mm -hmm. that tips that you gave 
uh, for me that was well done because um, I always I always see myself as a shy person but well you you give me uh, some encouragement from your tips uh, while we wait for the participants to uh, give some questions can I ask you one yes sir yes sir go ahead okay uh, so this success tips that you gave us um, do you have the method to train the students uh, of English for Business to master those tips? Yes, Let's say. Um, in the, yeah. the method we use in public speaking is uh, each student will, will give four speeches and these the success are the way that they can receive the highest grades. Um, and so, for example, if a student just comes up and they're, they have lots of data only, you cannot read their slides, they share no stories, they stand like this, um, and they, they show no emotion. What, what I would do is I, after the first speech, I would, you know, I meet with with the with these students and say, all right, here I give them back a feedback and I say, this is something that maybe you can can work on. You know, I, I've seen I've seen students, for example, they show lots of energy, emotion. Uh, they they give stories, you know, but they. Their simplest, their their slides were not simple, and in fact, they would have pictures that no one understood why that picture was in there. But then I've also seen on the other side students that do uh, a great job on their on their PowerPoint, and they they had great stories. You knew exactly what their slides were saying, but they 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 just stood like this and they didn't want to move. And so the method we have is to see the weakness and then help develop that weakness where it becomes a strength before the, before the term, before the semester ends. Take that weakness in the beginning and turn it into a strength. I see. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's that's a that's a good example. So uh, let me let me summarize it. So you can uh, so in English for Business, you will coach. Yeah, you will give the the students assignments uh, to de develop their skill uh, in public speaking and you will coach them and it's a continuous process so it's not like uh, you give assignment they they did it and you give uh, the assignment score but you also coach them throughout the process yes i really appreciate you using that word i like that word coach and so i should have already used that word so thank you so much for using it because that's exactly how I see the class. I do not see myself as only giving theory, 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 theory for the whole semester, but coaching. So for example, like the first assignment will say, okay, this is your topic. Uh, and then for the last speech on their fourth speech, you know, they have to come up with their own topic. But what that means is a progressive class. The, the fourth speech is more difficult than the, than the first speech. But what we do is we coach them along the way and we help them to get better. And again, to turn those weaknesses in August into a strength you know, by December or February to June.
So uh, it seems like that we have already got some question here. Uh, okay. Okay, let's see. Sorry, please wait. No problem. Ah, so it's from Chelsea, from uh, Petra High School One. Uh, so the question, so the question is. Uh, for Mr. Jeffrey, do you have any tips for us how to effectively practicing public speaking during this quarantine instead of speaking in front of the mirror? Uh, that's a that's a that's a unique and how do you say it? Cocok, cocok question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a great question, Chelsea. I would say that. Siblings, brother, sister, uh, they would make a great audience. Maybe mom or dad. And if you say, well, everybody's busy, everybody's on their gadgets all the time. Another great audience is fish. Uh, I have two goldfish that are just to my right arm. And I can, uh, when I, maybe, maybe not even public speaking, maybe I write a paper and I want to edit it before I turn it in, I might read it out loud to my fish, you know, or public speaking can be the same way. I might speak to them. Now, of course, the fish cannot give feedback. And so a mom, a dad, a brother, sister, grandmother, this would be uh, you know, better, a better feedback, of course. But uh, even in quarantine, and you know, here's another thing. One thing we know about quarantine is there is a virtual world that is now expanding. The virtual world is getting bigger and bigger. So maybe you have a friend. Maybe your grandmother doesn't, maybe your speech is in English, Chelsea, and your grandmother doesn't uh, speak a lot of English. And so you might ask a friend, hey, you got 15 minutes or five minutes, 10 minutes. Can I just speak to you uh, my speech? And will you give me feedback and please just be honest with me? Maybe if I make a, a grammar mistake or if, I, if I'm doing something that distracts the audience from, from my speaking, please tell me and I will be, we'll be best friends after. I, I actually want you to tell me. And so really the, uh, you have many options in the virtual world, not just people you quarantine with, but also maybe friends through Zoom or Google Meets or Line or something. Okay. Wow, it's it's like questions after question after uh, right now. Uh, we have already it's like eight question here. Uh, okay. Uh, well. Friends, uh, let me. I I would say first uh, because it's so many questions. So uh, we will we will pick randomly. Okay, guys. Okay, there's a here's a question from uh, Marcel Wiradinata. Reaching greetings. I'm from Petra Two Senior High School. I'd like to ask whether it is important to improve pronunciation in the long term of public speaking career. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Todd, uh, he, Marcel is asking, is it important to improve pronunciation if he's, if he's to be a public speaker? Hey, Marcel, that's a really good question. And I have some great news for you. Um, if you're talking about public speaking in English, then of course, pronunciation is a part of it. It's not the main part, as I've already expressed with some of my Indonesian students, better speakers than native English speakers. But of course, that enunciation, pronunciation needs to be, needs to be, um, uh, able to be understood, but Marcel, I have some really good news. In the English language, there are many accents. 
from like UK, America, or Canada. And so there's a great flexibility to the English language. So yes, of course, you always want to be improving your pronunciation, but there is a flexibility there. So don't, uh, don't be too nervous about your pronunciation because in the English language, we are experienced to hear many different pronunciations. All right, another question? Okay, so uh, this is, uh, there are some more questions, sir. So the time is, already up, but let's make time for one more question, sir. Uh, please wait. Okay, here's from... It's from Seraphim Autumn. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey, I would like to ask, when we are public speaking, and for example, we notice the audience are starting to get bored, how do we deal with that? Wow, you guys are asking the questions. That's another great one because I have it easy. I, I'm on a virtual world right now. I don't get to see everybody, but I have spoken many times with an audience and you might, if you think that they're getting bored, Again, you can go back to some of the, the acronym success, things like unexpectedness, uh, a story, because sometimes stories will just make people listen. I think you can relate to what I'm saying. Maybe, again, like a pastor on Sunday morning, you're not listening, you're not listening, you're not listening, but then a story, the pastor tells a story, now all of a sudden, Oh, you're listening to this. It's a great story. But another practical uh. Uh, Mr. Bridges, you are, uh, you have no sound. You're muted. I don't know. Uh, ah. Can you hear me now? Ah, yeah. Okay. I'm not Just sure. Just continue where you left off. What was the last thing you heard? Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. remember. What I, what I said was... Uh, that yes, you can tell stories, things that are unexpected, part yeah, yeah, yeah. of the acronym success, but also asking questions to the audience. So for example, if I had 30 people in my, in my house right now, and I think that maybe they're not listening, I might say, hey, okay, tell me what you think about, about what I just said. Do you, do you agree with this? Do you disagree? And then you can go into dialogue and not just monologue. Mm. Dialogue, not just monologue. That's good. 
That's really good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so because the time is up, uh, we should continue to closing the session. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bridges, for the inspiring. For me, I I I feel that it's it's inspiring. So I it's motiv it motivates me to train myself to be a better speaker. Uh, uh, and thank you for the answers for the questions. Uh, so, guys, uh, those of you who ask, uh, I would like to remind you to email your credential, email your uh, email your identity to. English at petra.ac.id. Uh, so our English for Business can give you the uh, the present, the goodie bag. Uh, all right. Uh, so so allow me to because this is closing. Allow me to introduce. Uh, Petra Christian University to all of the participants. Uh, okay, as uh, as you can see in the screen. So Petra Christian University strives uh, strives to the vision of to be caring and global university with commitment to Christian values. Uh, we are established in one hundred in the year nineteen sixty one. So next year we will be uh, sixty years old. Uh, we have been nominated. We have been uh, we attained the status of Indonesia's uh, foremost private university for three years in a row. Uh, and uh, we currently have 31 uh, programs for bachelor degree. Uh, and if you join us, you, you will have the chance to, to gain international experience through our international programs, which is student exchange, joint degree, double degree. Uh, we also provide uh, those of uh, the students who are in need with uh, scholarship up to 100% scholarship. Uh, and after you finish the study, you will, you will proudly join a huge community, a huge community of more than 41,000 alumni uh, which are scattered through four continents. Well, uh, if you have further questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, stay in touch with us. You can visit our website at petra.ac.id, or you can uh, you can chat us in our WhatsApp hotline, uh, which is in zero eight one. Two three four zero six seven three two three, like in the screen, and please do follow us on our Instagram UK underscore Petra. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for staying. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, stay home, stay healthy, stay safe, stay happy. Uh, God bless us all. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you guys. Bye.